NOPS is really focused on two things. The first being paying less for what you're using. And then the second being you just using less cloud, right? So the essentials package is really focused on that second pillar. And what we do is we go through and there's a variety of different things that we look at, then we measure, and then what we do is present a list of recommendations that should you choose to, you can click through automate or fully automate uh, to reduce your overall cloud bill. So you'll see the overall summary here. And as I scroll down, there's quite the collection of different areas where we can help you use less in the cloud. The first that I'll just stop at the top left is idle resources. This is around EC2 instances that are just not being used. Then we also have EBS recommendations, and this is around EBS volumes that have not been attached for a while. And what that looks like when we click in very quickly, you'll see the different types of recommendations across the top here for EC2, for EBS, and you can always click into them to get more insight onto just what we're saying. So in these situations for each of these instances, what we're really doing is saying that they just haven't been utilized and you could likely safely terminate them or stop them. Uh, right now, we are focused on stopping because even when you stop, you still don't pay the compute charges. Uh, and in the future date, what we're gonna do is, is also allow you to choose to terminate the EC2 instance, but stopping is very cost effective and it's also less permanent. So the other option that we had in the package was the EBS recommendations. And again, this is looking specifically at idle EBS volumes. And this is when an EBS volume has not been attached for a while. You can see all the specs for it, what each one would save you. And if you realized, actually, you know what, I really do need this one, you can just deselect it. So you have the ability to go ahead and make modifications to what we recommend, because we don't know our, your infrastructure as well as you do. And then you can either clean up, which means get rid of them, or you can also take a snapshot and clean up, which is the recommended action. Because then what you're doing is you're just taking a snapshot of the volume to make sure that in the event that, oh, oops, we really did need that after all, you do have a mechanism for being able to recover that. That is all rolled up together in the summary. And that, again, is just one piece of the essentials package. Auto scaling group right sizing is where we look at the overall nodes and say, you know what, you could really go down uh, across the entire node pool or node group rather. And then we'll have EC2 right sizing, which works similarly, except it's a little bit more individualistic. So if I click on that, you will notice we have two different types. We've got basic and then we have the enhanced. What the enhanced recommendations means is that we are currently configured with something providing the memory metric. And right now we currently integrate with CloudWatch Agent and Datadog. We have a few others on the roadmap, but for right now, those are your two options. And that will then include memory into the recommendations. And everything that you see here, we have ruled a 95% confident or above that this is the right choice. So again, there may be some other instances that you see in other areas that you're like, you know what, this isn't really being utilized. And that may be the case, and they could be safe bets to right size. We're just not 95% or above confident, so it doesn't show in our list. Next option that I wanted to talk about real quick is that we have storage. Now, EBS recommendations would technically be storage, but when we're talking about the storage recommendations here, really what we're looking at is changing from GP2 to GP3 where it is cost advantageous. So again, there are situations where you might come across an EBS volume and the move from GP2 to GP3 could end up costing you more depending on the throughput that you have and the size of the drive. We've done all that calculation and we only present stuff that's going to save you money. What's really nice about this particular upgrade or migration is that it is non-disruptive by AWS standards. So there's no risk. It's just an in-flight change. You don't have to stop or restart your instances. It's just an on-the-fly change to save you some money. And then lastly, we do have our scheduler program. 
Now, by default, what we show you is the utilization-based recommendations. So basically, because of the metrics that we're gathering, we're saying, hey, you know what? You could probably just shut this off during these hours because of the pattern of utilization that we're seeing. Okay, so for this particular machine, I can click into it. And what we're doing is giving you the recommendation. This happens to be on Monday, so you can go through each day. And we're saying, based on the actual patterns, green means on, red means off. And then if you want to, you can automate this. Now, you can change that recommendation pattern. But again, it's based on the actual utilization. If you're a little more interested in creating your own, you can go right ahead and look at the other optimizations where we have scheduling based on workload. And what this does is this looks at known production environments. And then very similarly, what we do is we say, you can go ahead and schedule this, and then we'll send the signal to shut this off. At the time of green, we'll go ahead and send the signal to turn this back on. We can go ahead and click into this. And then if you'd like, we also have under the scheduler workload-based recommendations. And what these do is we try to separate non-production environments from production environments. Works very similarly. Um, so you can see this is all for ECAS clusters. Um, some of the other options that we have here would be RDS, RDS clusters, auto scale groups, and then EC2 instances. So for an example, I'm going to go ahead and go into this particular workload. It's got some mixed types between EC2 and RDS. That's okay. It can all go on the same schedule. And then if I look at one of these, you'll see I still have a very similar view in terms of the pattern. It's just that the pattern by default, instead of looking at the utilization, just does a 12-hour, 12-hour on and off switch. So this can be changed uh, whenever you like, if you wanted to go ahead and manipulate this particular schedule. This is for this particular instance, but if we look down, you'll see this is for the entirety of the schedule. Again, you can change these if you want to. Just click. You can also drag and drop, and there you go. And when this is your new schedule, we'll recalculate your savings, at which point you can go ahead and continue the configuration to get this automated. So again, that's the overall idea of the essentials. Once you have the package, you can do some or all of these uh, at your will based on what makes sense for your time and your business objectives. Hope that was helpful.